Okay, so we're uh, in the flight deck and set for the return leg back to Birmingham now. Uh, engines are off, so what we'll do is we'll uh, prepare to push back. Weather is appalling as you can see. We'll get the tail view up as well. we need the GPS uh, we need to set the new flight plan so we're going Pisa um, that one there we're going to Birmingham and we want 32,000 feet It always lows the GPS massive, but there's no need to ever have it that big. That's about perfectly fine. So there's our aircraft. ready to push back so we'll uh, get clearance and go should arrive into Birmingham about half past eight UK time in real time eight thousand feet and we're ready to taxi so uh, I don't know the runways here so we'll need progressive taxi to help us out but uh, we push back here we'll uh, start the engines as well at this point it is quite a long push back here at Pisa to be fair And we'll have two sets of flaps for departure as well. Check speed brakes. Yes, they're in working order.
so let's just see which way we need to go, okay. So we're going out to that runway there, so we're going to need to go round the apron a little bit. So we've got to do a left onto this taxiway here. Really terrible weather conditions for this departure, but we'll see how we go. this is the wrong way here so it's blended it's line up and go then Definitely 2 2 right, as you can see from the runway in front of us. Let's get the throttles up. And we're fully fueled as well for this departure, so fuel won't be an issue. And let's go. V1, rotate, V2. And airborne. An airborne. Uh, 
autopilot take control of the altitude auto arm throttle and let the speed take control and slow us now for the ascent bring her down to 250 and we'll change Super departure, we should now be given our turn clearance. Bring one level of flaps in, and there's our turn clearance. stable at the speed, bring the flaps back in and we can continue the climb now there is traffic at 17,000 feet but we're quite a distance away from that cleared only to 8,000 so not a problem where that's concerned at the moment didn't realise they'd given me a head in direction other than track and we can carry on climbing to 14,000 which means we can now speed up as well
so we're going to enter on to uh, our track now back to Birmingham a couple of waypoints not as many as the outbound flight but uh, we're looking at an hour and a half's flying time so we should be on the ground in Birmingham about quarter to nine UK time I would say real time that is Well, we'll do this turn to 350, but I don't see what difference it's going to make in terms of the track. We'll do it anyway. I'll get a message now saying proceed on course uh, after we've been told about that A321 just ahead oh and there's a 737 behind it as well couldn't write it could you those two planes look awfully close and they're about to go right over the top of us so we'll turn and resume our own navigation now turn to the left
so I don't know why um, the inertial navigation system didn't pick up the track there but obviously we've been turned around by air traffic control now you can see the uh, sort of pinky purpley track on that gauge there that's what we're going to intercept um, it's also on the GPS in much detail in the bottom left um, that's what we're going to intersect uh, for the waypoints back to Birmingham See what we can do. We get our course clearance now as well, so. So we'll go on course now and we'll, uh, that'll take us all the way until South Birmingham when we get on track for our approach and landing. There is a very strong possibility that we might have some bad weather at Birmingham so uh, that could affect the arrival I've got a funny feeling that it's going to be a 1-5 approach which means we will have to do a circuit at Birmingham Airport uh, to make that approach
so we're approaching Swiss airspace um, as you can see it's quite mountainous it's a pretty much a direct track from here back to the UK so even though as you can see in the bottom left the next waypoint is in 11 minutes 79 miles um, we're pretty much going to be going in a straight line for the next sort of hour or so looking at arrival into Birmingham if we carry on with this sort of rate around about 10 to 9 UK time 10 to 10 CET or 10 to 4 if you're in North America the uh, weather conditions and the time conditions in the simulator are linked to my computer's time so the sun is actually setting outside now so the conditions you're seeing in the flight are the real conditions outside right now So as you can see, directly ahead of us is the Alps, you can see the uh, snow peaked mountains there, uh, we're about to leave Italy into Switzerland and then into France, Mont Blanc is on the left, and that's the peak you can see sticking up above all the rest, to the left of the cockpit.
so we've cleared the Alps now and heading over northern France towards the UK. Um, we'll have a look on the radar. So we're on track. Flying over northern France as you can see. At our cruising altitude to our next waypoint just north of Paris is our next waypoint uh, before we go off the north over Normandy uh, towards the United Kingdom. I would anticipate um, a descent path um, that will take us probably down over Southampton, something like that, down over Southampton. Uh, but actually the way we're being routed at the moment is probably more Portsmouth, over Portsmouth, and then track north, probably up the Seven Estuary in fact, towards Birmingham, um, and then we'll see from there. how we track towards um, an arrival into Birmingham uh, the beeping you can hear at the moment that's the out markers for the track that we need to follow. Uh, we're going a bit off course here at the moment, so we'll just correct that course a little bit. Up to BSN. BSN just um, north of Paris. And in fact, as you can see now from the bottom left on the map, we're going to track actually over Brighton. Uh, we will intersect just to the west of Gatwick. Um, and then we will go through uh, the Oxford VOR. to then track into the uh, Birmingham descent. The weather conditions as you can see are favourable the weather conditions in real time are clear so the simulation has got the weather conditions absolutely perfectly correct and twilight is exactly what we're dealing with in real time as well so we're looking like it's going to be a, a night time approach into Birmingham where uh, about I would say an hour out of our arrival. Arrival time 2045 UK time. It's going to be there or thereabouts, probably a little bit later depending on what approach we get as we uh, head on to the approach at Birmingham. But I would say flying time to the approach from now about 45 minutes.
I thought that we had a course issue so we'll um, just amend the course here a little bit and we're flying into the sun now and we have a descent instruction as well I didn't realise about that so we'll do that as well down to 2600 uh, 26,000 sorry so course of 285 down to 26,000 feet not quite sure why we're getting the descent instruction it could be because of weather but We're quite a way out from where we need to be, so I don't see why we would get that descent instruction at this point. actually quite a turn that to make as well so uh, wouldn't want to be having my beef bourbon whilst we're making these turns that's for sure not putting us on the track I don't understand why the inertial navigation system is not we should be turning left to be honest so we might have to do this manually that's going to fly us off course on this track let's do that and see if that puts us on the track could be that the simulation's been paused and, and lost yeah that's doing it now so hopefully that's job done now Yeah, that's got it right now, so... There is an aircraft uh, beach, King Air 350 below us. I don't think we'll be asked about it, it's way too low. 18,000 feet, massively below our track. How interesting is that? We get, we get our cruise altitude this far into the flight, that's intriguing well we have to follow the instructions but uh, 
I would be expecting a descent track at this point. In fact, I might just ask for a decrease to three flight level three zero zero. Yeah, that makes more sense at this point. Because it would be crazy to go to 32,000 feet now when we're not far off the descent. Just doesn't add up to me, but there we go. Oh, we'll just uh, see what this air traffic control ins and outs are. Not a lot. So at this point, we'll have a word from our sponsors, and we'll be right back. There you have it, cheap holidays to Spain, can't go wrong with that. We are less than 100 miles from the next waypoint, about 150 miles from the North French coast, 200 miles to the British coastline. As you can hear from the beeping, we're still tracking. Um, the markers for our flight. The skies are clearing, the skies in Birmingham are clear now as you can see in the simulation that's absolutely the conditions as they are over Europe right now so clear skies should be a fairly smooth approach into Birmingham. Um, assuming we get a 3-3 approach we should be on the ground in the next 45 minutes or so but nothing's ever simple so we'll probably get a 1-5 approach which means we've got to fly around the circuit we'll see
Yeah, I was just going to say we're about to overspeed, so we need to uh, slow the aircraft down a bit. With the 2,000 feet change, obviously, air gets a bit thinner, so... Uh, indicated airspeed and ground speed change dramatically at that point so indicated airspeed 3 329 currently ground speed that's actually 478 so it's a dramatic difference so we need to slow the plane down just a little bit we're uh, over speed at the moment but still 475 knots We're still going like the clappers, so we're still looking like making an approach to Birmingham probably in the next 30 minutes or so. There's quite a few planes below us at the moment. So there's a Cessna caravan below the clouds, there's another plane about to pass under us you can just see the uh, that's another Cessna caravan as well, a couple of Cessna caravans below us so nothing major but uh, as you can see in the top left now you can see the uh, coastline of northern France And there's a plane directly in front of us, a 737-800. Slightly below us, there's a couple of planes in the distance as well, so we're going to have to watch out for these. We're coming into a lot of traffic here. Might have to uh, make some manoeuvres. Passing left and right. That's two aircraft passing left and right there. It looked like a lightning strike as well, but... We'll just monitor this and uh, see what the traffic is doing. We're, we're quite happy at our cruising altitude at the moment. lights have come on in the cockpit now because obviously we're going into the hours of darkness obviously once we start the descent as well the uh, cabin lights will uh, be dropped as part of flying in the hours of darkness So thankfully Birmingham Airport has a uh, full runway lighting. So arriving in the hours of darkness is not a problem at Birmingham. Um, full ILS Cat 3, so uh, either 33 or 15 approach can be done in darkness.
there's a Lear jet below us, but that's not an issue either. In fact, he's at uh, 20 odd thousand feet, so not a problem. So we're coming up on uh, the BSN waypoint now, uh, 27 miles out, 3 minutes flying time, uh, it's a slight dog lift to the right, not dramatic, only a couple of degrees off track, I would say. Yeah, one degree or two degrees, so a very slight bank angle to the right uh, to put us over the English Channel. Once we're over the English Channel, I would expect we would get um, our approach clearance just as we um, come on the English coastline so air traffic control tends to say that's about 85 miles out it's actually more than that it's about 110 miles out um, but that's generally when you get the uh, the track for Birmingham we'll see anyway as we uh, cross over But uh, two minutes out, 17 miles, we'll, we'll see exactly how this transpires now as we uh, head over um, the coastline of the United Kingdom and uh, obviously through London air traffic control as well. Could make it a bit more interesting, we should see some more traffic in vision. Um, from the cockpit view at the moment you can see the English Channel now appearing in the distance. But very clearly this is going to be a night time approach now, the uh, sun is setting, so uh, we're going to be looking at a night time approach, so preparing the aeroplane is going to be a different kettle of fish really. Obviously we do have that 737, it's a bit close for comfort to be fair, very close for comfort.
Wow! Wow, that that was really very tasty then. That got awfully close. Where's he gone? That reminds me of the arrival yesterday into um, Bordeaux. Came up fast behind a Cessna. That was very close. I'm looking forward to seeing a replay of that. There's another plane off to our right as well. I don't trust any of these now. So ahead of us is the English Channel, it's now in full view. Like I say, I expect... Well, we'll just do this change of frequency. Um, I expect that uh, once we're over the English Channel, um, almost upon hitting the English coast, we'll start getting our descent instructions for Birmingham. Um, bear in mind we're supposed to be at 32,000, we had to ask for 30, so we may get an extra mile or so before uh, our full descent pattern into Birmingham. As I say, there's the English Channel ahead of us. Um, once we're over the English Channel, we should get our descent path. Um, hopefully, we'll get a 3 3 approach into them. If we get a 3 3 approach, we should be on the ground by 9 o'clock. And that's the ideal outcome from this flight but we'll see we'll see And a 737 has just appeared. 26,000 feet shouldn't affect us. We'll be apt to bear a bit though. It's just right on our track. Just a support.
so 150 miles out from Birmingham now uh, only two waypoints to go I would expect probably at about 70 miles out we'll uh, get our instructions come off the flight plan and start preparing for whichever runway they offer us I'm hoping it's going to be 3-3 but knowing flight simulator it's probably going to be 1-5 approach we'll have to see Three three approach would be absolutely beneficial at this point and it will mean a flying time of an hour and a half as opposed to nearly two hours the British coastline appears now at the main display you can see coast of France in the uh, tail view on the left hand side Considering we're absolutely miles away, I've got no understanding why that is. It should be London Centre or Brest Centre, really. And that's Flight Simulator for you. No sense at all. Makes no sense. Okay, so we're um, heading over the French coast now, over the English Channel. We're going to come on shore somewhere around Brighton. We're going to be routed directly up and over Gatwick. Um, and hopefully a 3-3 approach that would be ideal in this current scenario
that's obviously not a concern to us in any way, shape or form, so... That's the English southwest coast. Isle of Wight there in the uh, glorious sunset. Uh, beachy head is the little jut of land sticking out just below. We're coming in over Dover, but obviously I can't show you that because the uh, nose is too far ahead. But that is beachy head to the left, right. As you can see, it's like the greyish area to the left of the peninsula you can see there. So we're coming in over the English coast now, I'd expect uh, a descent profile and probably find out the runway before too long. Okay, so we're uh, 60 miles from our next waypoint 
a hundred or so miles from Birmingham so I'd expect we'll get our landing clearance very shortly indeed Okay, so it's a Honley um, track. We'll have to see whether we get a Honley approach or not. If we do, we'll be on the ground by just after 9 o'clock. If we're going round, probably about 20 past 9. But uh, we're going over Oxford anyway, we're tracking Oxford. Um, we'll see in the next few minutes what our uh, approach track will be. So as you can see to uh, the, on the GPS to the left of us now, just we're flying, you won't be able to see it, but down there somewhere is Gatwick, uh, Isle of Wight in the distance, Portsmouth, 
um, South Sea and all that uh, behind you there is uh, Worthing um, Brighton is absolutely behind us we flew over Brighton um, so we just passed Gatwick uh, Heathrow is below the nose on this left hand side that's the Thames estuary over there so we can't really see much of that unfortunately but uh, we are tracking basically in between Gatwick and Heath Road there's a little channel if you look to the bottom left you'll see the GPS and we're tracking literally in the middle of Gatwick to the left Heath Road to the right and we're going right the way through the middle of both of them it's quite a unique little track that to be fair um, but we've got a little turn to the right coming up in about 11 miles time um, once we make that turn I'd expect we'll get our approach sequence hopefully we're going to get a 3-3 if we get a 3-3 we'll be on the ground in 20 minutes time or so so we'll see what happens So there's the little turn now that puts us on the track towards Birmingham. That's the Oxford turn, so we're above Oxford right now. Some more traffic coming into sight, so we might be asked about that. There's another plane as well, there's two planes in my purview. a bit closer than I'd have liked to be there So we've got a 3-3 approach which means we'll be on the ground with a bit of luck by about 5 past 9. Very happy with that, that's superb. So we'll just follow the instructions now.
absolutely superb that So that's the uh, vectors onto the final, so I'm really happy with that. So we can go three down to 2,000 feet. The only downside with this is that I have to descend and fast. And I need to bleed speed bleed speed like it's going out of fashion got to absolutely bleed speed if I'm going to make this So we'll get sync rate, but that's not a problem at this point. We're so high, it's not an issue. But we need to bleed speed. do flaps until we're under 200 so got to bleed more speed whilst I'm going to put the flaps in I can get the speed brakes off yep there we go So we're going to go back to the track. Program, enter. Yeah. How far out are we? 30 miles, yeah, so 30 miles. Might want to slow that down a bit actually. Mm, 22,000 feet. Yeah, we're going to slow that down just a tad. Put us on to final approach.
cleared for takeoff. Runway 33, Canmore 1181. Okay, so we're down to speed. We're losing altitude. This is looking like a really good approach at the moment. We're 22 miles out. Twenty-two miles out and we're at eighteen thousand feet. Dropping at eighteen hundred feet a minute. So that should drop us on the glide path right as we enter the scope but you never know how these things happen contact Birmingham departure on 172 got to watch this speed here so we might can't do any more flaps than that before I get a gear warning so it's going to be fine but we've got a bit of clouds to deal with here as well so we might have some turbulence as we come down 18 miles out 16,000 feet yeah we're too high we're going to have to bring this down a bit more This is too high on this approach. We're about to enter the um, terminal area now. Too high. We've still got Maple to fly yet. See, I can't slow the aircraft down until we're under 10,000 feet and I've got more flaps otherwise we'll lose lift and sink and uh, we don't want that because we'd lose the aircraft so 14,000 14 miles out that's okay I can cope with that so we might just bleed off a bit of that vertical speed if I need to do a bit more I will do a bit more yeah we do need a bit more see if I can get it down to because I can land at 135 that's where I was let's see if I can get a 160 I don't want to do the gear really until I'm six miles out but I'm still well too high well too high, ok I'm going to have to bring the speed right down now let's try a 140 at this point 12,000 still too high on this approach really 11 miles out, I'd want to be far lower than this go right down Come Sink here. rate Don't worry about that announcement that's fine Sink we're, rate. we're slow enough and I can uh, bleed rate. off some speed anyway and altitude Sink with, rate uh, Sink rate Sink rate Didn't want to go this way but 
Sink rate. We'll bleed off high Sink to rate. Uh, speed with air brakes. Sink rate. Sink rate. Sink rate. Sink rate. Don't worry about it, it's a sink rate warning. Sink rate. I'm doing that on purpose. Sink rate. Sink rate. Sink rate. Sink rate. It is on purpose. Don't worry about the sink, sink rate. rate. Sink rate. It's a trick when sink you're too rate. high, it's side slipping, it's not a problem. Sink rate. As you can tell, sink the plane rate. is still flying, so. Sink rate. It just allows us to drop a lot of height sink rate. very quickly without using any engine power. Sink rate. Sink rate. We'll leave it there now, I think. Should be able to let the plane get on the glide slope itself now. Sink rate. Sink rate. And the gear down and full flaps. And very heavy rain, obviously. Sink rate. Sink rate. Sink rate. And Sink rate. What we'll do at this point is we'll take the Sink rate. I'll hold off and I will take control of decision altitude. We'll leave the plane in charge of the speed until the last moment.